There are moments in your life where you can just, in your mind, go right back there. You can hear exactly the words that were spoken and realize what a profound moment that was. And this was one of those. This was an elderly woman with really bad heart disease who daily, it seemed, uh, would have these incredible episodes of chest pain. And she was my patient. Uh, I was assigned uh, to take care of her. And she was somebody for whom faith was absolutely the center of everything. And she was very free to talk about that. And she said, you know, doctor, I've shared my faith with you a few times, and you never say anything. <laughs> what do you believe? Just four words. What do you believe? Pretty amazing childhood. Grew up on a farm, didn't go to school until the sixth grade, taught mostly by my mother. She was not a teacher who had a lesson plan. <laughs> it was, what did you do every day? You woke up and you said, okay, what's interesting? Uh, let's learn about that. I would not say there was much family faith life at all. It didn't seem in my family to be very important. And it wasn't very important to me either. We each were given a black box about this size, sealed up with something inside it. And we had to think of every experiment to try to figure out what's inside that black box. What is science all about? It's that there are these black boxes <laughs> of things that we don't know about yet, where knowledge has not yet arrived. And you as the scientists get the chance to come up with the experiments and then open the box and <laughs> see what's there. That totally captivated me. I was pretty much a hermit in terms of my scientific experiences in graduate school. And I longed for something that was more focused on people. And I realized that wasn't just that I wanted to have a community of other scientists that I could interact with. I want to work on something that's relevant to humans. And at the same time, I got exposed by auditing a course on biochemistry, learning about DNA and RNA, and it was very mathematical. And it fit nicely into the kinds of things that I thought would really be fun to work on. I figured I may as well go the whole way <laughs> and give myself a chance not just to study human biology, but to be part of it as a doctor. Coming out of science, realizing that the evidence for a creator was actually pretty interesting. There was, after all, the Big Bang, and uh, wait a minute, what happened before that? All that stuff I did as a graduate student with quantum mechanics, all these elegant equations that I loved, they were not just mathematics, they were beauty to me. <laughs> Maxwell's equations describing electromagnetism. That is so amazing, and that's truth right there, those equations. Wait, wait a minute, why should nature be beautiful in this way? Why should mathematics work? The laboratory can be thought of a place of worship, just like the cathedral, because you get the chance once in a while as a scientist to discover something that no human knew before, but God knew it. So it's a little glimpse of God's mind in a way, that's what science is doing. It's glimpsing God's mind and being in awe of that. To know your own instruction book has got to be one of those profound moments for the human journey, to be able to read it out to be able to begin to understand how it actually guides and directs this phenomenally complex process of taking you from a single cell, which we all once were, to a fully formed human being with incredible complexities. 
I didn't dream, as I was learning about DNA, that we would, in my lifetime, be able to read out that entire script. It just seemed too enormously complicated. This was the most significant thing that was going to happen in my lifetime as far as an understanding of human biology. And if it failed, well, at least we would have tried. So I made the leap. A lot of really dedicated people came alongside from six different countries and 20 laboratories and all agreeing to work side by side and not worry about who got the credit. My job was to try to keep the momentum going and be sure that the quality of the data was the best it possibly could be, and that if somebody fell behind, somebody else stepped in to make up the difference. And when we got to that moment where on June 26, 2000, in the East Room of the White House, announcing that we had a pretty good draft, my comments that day were about God and about the fact that we had now seen the language that God used to speak us into being. One of the many revelations about our own genome was the ability to compare it between people and find out that the similarities are just breathtaking. It's about 99.6% across the whole genome. And that would be true if I picked almost anybody on the planet. That's the other thing that I found particularly powerful about this. For anybody who tried to make arguments that there's some humans that are really not quite the same as part of our family, you can't get there. Science will not allow it. We are all one family, and it is so clear at that level. I've had all kinds of interesting challenges in my career as a medical scientist, as a leader of a organization that tries to find answers to all kinds of medical problems that cause human suffering. I've never had anything like COVID-19. And let's be clear, we have not had an epidemic of an infectious disease like this in more than 100 years. So if we're all feeling this is pretty overwhelming, there's a reason for that. I feel that God has in some way instilled in me this desire to spend my life, at least in part, trying to reach out to those who are suffering and need help. And the tools of science, a gift from God to be able to sort out things like the human genome and then apply them to relieve the suffering of a child. What an incredible way to feel that connection with the creator of the universe.